So welcome to both times. I sometimes call myself Ashley, Ed, and James. Good evening, guys. Hello there. Evening, Ash. So this evening we are talking about the 1996 Doctor Who movie, as requested by Edward. I think it was actually Edward's idea to come up with this one. So Ed, why? Really? Apart from the fact well. We've done Christmas specials and, you know, for the last few years, Doctor Who's done New Year's specials. And I thought this is set at New Year in 1999. So potentially this could be our New Year's special. Planet Earth 1999. He's back and it's about time. Who are you? I am... The Doctor! In the fight for eternity. At midnight tonight, this planet will be pulled inside out. There can only be one master. I never liked this planet, Doctor. Paul McGann is Doctor Who. Don't panic! Everything is under control! Monday, the 27th of May on BBC One. I remember in 19... I think it was 1993, I went to a Doctor Who convention in Manchester. And they played... The concept theme tune for this, and I must admit, it wowed everyone. Um, but maybe that's where it finished. Who knows? I'll tell you what I think about it in a second. Ed, as you decided, and I know you've got copious notes. You want to kick it off? I mean, no, Ed's got so many notes that he, you know, I don't know how he stands that. Got notes on notes, haven't you, Ed? I've got, I've got my notes, and then I've gone back and put notes in the margins on the notes. But do you know what? We'll let James go first. All right, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. We'll let James go first. All right. Where do I begin, chaps? Um, I have some very, very vivid memories of finding out about this. Uh, so, 1996, I was in my last year at high school. Um, I was an utter geek um, all the way through primary. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd been watching Doctor Who. Then there was nothing. There was nothing for years apart from occasional VHS releases. And you know, my copies of Day of the Daleks and, and Revenge of the Cybermen were more than worn out by this point. Um, but you know, I, I was 15, 16, um, probably trying to be cool in some ways. I'm not sure if a bonfire of the vanities had taken place, but I, I stopped doing some of the geeky stuff. I wasn't getting Doctor Who magazine anymore. Uh, so I didn't know about this at all until one day walking down Market Street in Manchester, there used to be an HMV towards the bottom end. There was a massive one at the top and there was a smaller one at the bottom end. And I walked past it, casually glanced through the, the doorway and there was a big poster up there saying Doctor Who, the movie starring Paul McGann and featuring Sylvester McCoy as the, as the seventh Doctor. I thought, what? What's this? I um, immediately went and found out everything I could about this thing. Um, and, oh, good God, good God, I loved it. I remember sitting there. I was, first time in ages, I had been genuinely excited to watch a TV programme. Um, I remember the continuity announcement. Um, I don't remember the exact things, but one of those proper, you know, received pronunciation. It's just, um, mankind faces total destruction in Doctor Who. And that's, oh, wow, fantastic. Um, and then, then, then it, it started, and we got Paul McGann's glorious Liverpoolian tones, um, giving us that that wonderful in, introduction. Um, and straight away, straight away, I was hooked. I have an enormous amount of affection for this flawed, yes, but wonderful TV movie. And I spent many a month afterwards waiting for, with trepidation, almost nervous trepidation excitement and wonder waiting for the announcement of the inevitable series that then didn't happen. Um, so I have a great deal of affection for this. It has flawed in places, but we can get onto that in terms of an enjoyable slice of who for the 90s. It delivered for me. Very good, James, very good. Well, Ed, I say what, should we save you to the end? And then... Um, okay. Yeah, okay, right, cool. Well, I remember this not quite as vividly as James, I could, I could, you can't see him, but I mean, he was very excited then. I could see the enthusiasm. He was meaning every single word that. Um, I really looked forward to it. I was really absolutely gutted like everyone else in 89 because I quite fancy Sophie Aldred. Oops. And um, and so the rest of McCoy was fantastic. That was one of my quibbles, I suppose, about this because when it came out, I did enjoy it. 
this is going to be a really sort of crappy critique, but one thing I didn't like about it was I felt it was just a bit too glossy. I felt it was a bit like um, Lewis and Clark and all the other stuff that was on at that time, yeah, in terms of the overall look. But that's really more to do with how it was filmed, I suppose. Now, if I take it that away and I forget my love of the 89 one, um, it is it is cracking. Great acting in there, great sets. Love it. The only thing I think I would like, in hindsight, is I think if Paul McCann wore Christopher Eccleston's outfit, it would be amazing. I, oh, yeah. I, I think he was... Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not first on some of the costume design choices, but, yeah, I like it. It's, you got to try and detach yourself from the original Doctor Who, though, aren't you? It, well, for me, anyway. I can't enjoy it if I try and think of it as a continuation. I would almost... Really? Think, yeah, I would have almost would have preferred Sylvester not to have been in it. And I hope he doesn't I mean, get hit by the line, because he's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's not considering the amount of effort they, um, they, they they put into making it an obvious continuation. That That's an interesting perspective. But I think Paul McGowan would agree with you on the costume choice. He said a few times um, when he saw... When, when it came back in 2005, and then he saw Chris's costume, he said, I, you know, I, could, have, I could have worn that. And I think there was a big... Hoo ha, wasn't there? He was he was cast when he had long hair for whatever role it was, um, and then he shaved his head for his next role, and waltzed up in Canada with a shaved head, <laughs> and then they spent thousands of pounds on this awful wig for him, um, and, and forced him into it because they they wanted that Byron esque almost Christ like image of um, of him as the Doctor. Um, so I think he would agree with you, but that's a, that's a really interesting. Perspective. Well, for, for me, it's just because I just think it works really well as a standalone. It was a very contained um, movie, which I guess it, obviously it had to be because it had to be trying to appeal to an audience who, who knew nothing about it potentially because they were hoping that after doing that TV movie that they would get the series, but the ratings weren't quite what they hoped, so it didn't it didn't happen. Well, I'm sure there's probably a bit more to it than that, but I suppose that's the that's the general thing. But yeah, I thought it looked it worked quite well as a standalone piece. I thought. But um, yeah, there are callbacks. But I don't know. I just, I just think if I try and think of it as a follow-on, it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. Funniest thing about the Christopher Eccleston outfit because when Big Finish went from sort of the monthly range stories when he was having the sort of Byron esque outfit in the Adventures with Charlie and Cariz onto Dark Eyes, they did sort of rejig the look of his character, and he did have sort of the leather jacket and sh- still had the sort of floppy hair, but but sh- but shorter than it was. So he went for him. He saw his character did mature over time, which I'm sure it would have done on TV, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I think possibly that's with his input that he went for a sort of longer leather jacket than McGann jeans, ordinary sort of look. So and it suits him as well. So, Edward, I feel, I mean, we've just had a little bit there. Mm. I'll play for what we, we feel. Um, this this is going to be good, guys. <laughs> I'll, try and keep it I'll, Hang on. Drum roll. I'll try and keep it to less than six months, I promise you. <laughs> right. So, I've been doing... I've, 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 I watched this on Wednesday night in preparation, like I always try and do. And I've come up with a list of pros and cons on it. But then I come up with a list of inadvertent pros as well. So, to start with, the pros. Paul McGann. Uh, I was mid-twenties when this came out, and I could not quite believe they'd got Marwood from Within an Eye to be Doctor Who. I was like, "You really? This is, this is, this is incredible. And McGann... In the in the movie, he's amazing. That bit, I mean, it's, it's the most fa- well for fans, the most famous part. These shoes, they fit perfectly. Mm, not bad. But these belong to Brian. Yep. Keep them. Thank you. How's my blood? It's not blood. Mm, perhaps if I walk in, I'm stretching them a bit, they'll fit me better. Good idea. Let's go for a walk. Maybe you're the result of some weird genetic experiment. I don't think so. But you have no recollection of family? No. 
No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I remember, I'm, I, I, I'm with my father. We're lying back in the grass. It's a warm Gallifrey night. Gallifrey? Gallifrey! Yes, this must be where I live. Now, where is that? I've never heard of it. What do you remember? A meteor storm meant that the sky above us was dancing with lights. Purple, green, brilliant yellow, yes! What? These shoes! They fit perfectly. Yes. <laughs> that just so the doctor immediately. He's just, he nails it uh, straight away. Um, you know, he's as good as Pertwee was in Spearhead from Space or Jodie was in The Woman Who Fell to Earth. He just get got what it was to be the Doctor straight away. Brilliant. Sylvester McCoy, I I loved the new outfit they'd given McCoy's Doctor. Again, they got rid of the question mark jumper and he sort of looked almost, I don't know, at ease with himself rather than having to be this master manipulator. Obviously, he's older. And the way a Time Lord ages, you know, this could have been hundreds, even thousands of years for him as being that Doctor. So it's a long, 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 long time thing for him since Ace, etc. happened. So he sort of looks like he doesn't need to be playing these great big chess games with the universe anymore, that he's just sitting there, chilling, listening to his, his smooth jazz it's in the most, fan next pro, fantastic TARDIS set of all of them. It is an amazing TARDIS set. Uh, it, I, I saw, I remember seeing pictures of it. I think it, they've got this so right. It's brilliant. It's incredible. Um, next pro, UG Show and and uh, Daphne Asbrook. They're, they're they're perfect. They're 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 great. They're almost like setting up for the modern day sort of Romana and Adric done properly. Um, you know, I can imagine if it went on. You saw even even in a. 19 minute movie, you know, Chang Lee going from being a bad boy with a bad gang, realizing, you know, he's not that bad. He's just been in, he's in with a bad crowd. And the doctor would, so over the course of a series, would teach him to be a good person and what being a good person was. And then you've got, you know, Daffy Asbrook, like the other lead character in there, as I said, like the intelligent, capable woman, like a Romana or a Barbara. Great. Eric Roberts. Another big thumbs up for me. It's like he's watched the original series, seen Anthony and he thought, you know what? He's good, but he's not quite camp enough. <laughs> just ramped it up, not up, up to 11, he's ramped it up to 18. And I love his performance. I know he gets a lot of stick, but I think he's absolutely fantastic. I mean, he's not chewing the scenery. He's having a three-course meal with it. He's absolutely brilliant in it. Um, so I can't fault the acting or the set design. Now comes the bad bits, everything else. <laughs> um, I think I, at the time, again, I was an enormous, enormous fan of the Virgin New Adventures. They were, they, I went, when the Virgin, when they went off air, I went from being a fan to being an uber fan. It was the New Adventures that probably made, shaped me and made me what I was today. And to come from sort of five years of the risk-taking, the creativity, the insanity of the new adventures and go to a very, very unfortunately formulaic. What what were they thinking adventure? My story about this is I went on the bus to buy the VHS. It was a 45 minute bus ride. I left the house at quarter past seven in the morning. <laughs> I was at the shop at half past eight outside Woolworths waiting to get it. I got the bus back home at nine o'clock. I got home at quarter to 10. And by quarter past 11, I was probably the most depressed I've ever been in my life. <laughs> I've tried to do the pros. There are some really good things in there. Like I said, McGann and the, the cast are amazing with the material they've got to work with. They, they really lift it from being so, just a zero out of ten. They're, they're so good. They are so, so good. And the production design's fantastic and the direction's really, really good. It's just everything else. But I think, I've, to be honest, I was, I was spoiled by the new adventures. I think that's what it was at the time. So retrospectively, so, then, Ed. Respectively, so going back, looking at it detached, sort of with almost 30 years of hindsight, the inadvertent pros, it gave us Lung Barrow. If this hadn't come out, the new adventures wouldn't have finished and they probably wouldn't have brought out Lung Barrow, which is, which is great. It gave us the EDA novels. Uh, specifically, it gave us Alien Bodies, uh, which is something else. It's like 
if you've never read it, uh, if, if listeners have never read it, imagine if Doctor Who was brought back as a niche BBC Four program on at one o'clock in the morning. That's what Alien Bodies would be like. Uh, probably get a viewership of two or well, three. Probably, probably James, myself, and Lawrence Miles that wrote it, but it, it's brilliant. And the whole thing of the faction paradox. Um, and then I've got to get take my hats off to them. Big finish. They took what was looked at like a failed project at the time. And they gave the Eighth Doctor an era with companions, with classic adventures. They gave him, you know, Charlie, Kerry's, Lucy, um, Livchenka, Helen, amazing companions. They've given him some incredible arcs. And it's and the one I really that really stands out for me is Stranded. The four when he when he's sort of basically stuck in an apartment block. It's it's wonderful. And I think obviously without the 1996 TV movie, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had any of this, but Big Finish have given Paul McGann the era he deserves and he's still carrying on um, with it. And again, I think if it had have succeeded back in 96, the ideas for a series were a bit dodgy with them. Um, the Doctor looking for his father, Ulysses, and redoing the old stories, like calling the Cybermen the Cybes and things like that. And I think maybe it might have got two seasons and been canned, but then we'd never have got Russell T. Davis's success. So, from sort of, there's some really, really good things in there. There are some good things in there, and it led to some good things as well. And it's a curiosity. I think Ash said it, if it was a thing in its own right, then, you know, I'd take it standalone from the rest of the, rest of the season, almost like the Peter Cushing movie, take it away, take it one step removed. It's an interesting curiosity. But as a part of an ongoing series, there were so many things. I thought, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Um which is strange because I'm absolutely fine with Russell T Davis doing what he does, which is which I think is absolutely wonderful. It's just there's something I can't get on with, but the bits I do get on with I think are brilliant, and I won't say any more. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. That <laughs> was <laughs> impassioned. <I like. laughs> yeah, no, I think, I, I think you're quite right. Uh, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Ed. I mean, I think you're, you're a little bit probably perhaps a bit too passionate there. But I love the cast. I mean, Paul McGann, Ed Roberts. Um, you know, I love, I love both of them, and the rest of the team. And you were saying that as well, weren't you, Ed? A moment ago. Yeah, I mean, as I said, um, I found um, Yi Ji as um, Chang Lee and Daphne Ashbrook as Grace. To me, they were like the modern day um, Adric, but Adric done properly, and um, a modern day Barbara Barbara Wright. Because you know, even in that very very short period of what, 80 minutes of a TV movie in screen time, you actually saw character progression in Chang Lee's character from being this bad boy with a gang to actually seeing he's probably not a bad person that, that bad. He's just fallen in with a bad crowd because if he was that bad, would he really stay with the Doctor? Would he really come round? And I just think, you know, over the season, the three of them would have been probably a classic um, combination of Doctor and a couple of companions it's one of those. Sh- it's such a shame. I think it's a rights issue. Jamie might be able to correct me on this. That they can't. Big Finish can't do anything with the characters yeah. and do. It would be wonderful if Big Finish did the series that never was. Yeah, it, it really, it really would. I mean, there's there's a great many fans have been waiting for that. I think they've they had similar problems for a long time with the Eric Roberts master, and obviously that those are kind of resolved now because Big Finish, I think, what, they're on to season four now, the Eric Roberts Master season, and our old chum Rob Valentine is heavily involved in in those ones, and they're brilliant to listen to. But yeah, uh, you just want the, you want the, 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 that trio story to, to continue, and you, you, you're you quite right, I mean, you, you mentioned Adric, I, I agree completely, uh, Chang Lee had that kind of quality about it, but done in a much more effective way, so you haven't got this annoying brat of a know-it-all who's you know getting in the way you had someone who by implication had a very troubled background and was you know it was grew up in a degree of poverty and didn't really have much else but the gangs but you're quite right in what you say there he's um he stays behind his mates have you know, his, his mates or his gangs have presumably been killed uh, i mean the, the uk version was very heavily edited at that point with a gunfight at the start uh, but presumably they're dead and he stays behind to look after a, a stranger yes he tries to rob him but he could have just robbed his body and buggered off, uh, and he didn't. He stayed and he's waited for the um, waited for the ambulance. Once he learns um, who the master is and what the master's all about, he he, he breaks away from him. Um, I think he's got a Turlo esque quality as well because you, if you wrote it in that way, you'd have a certain 
doubt as to whether what side is he really on? Is he capable of um, more nefarious activities? Presumably, he has been in his youth, um, and I think the three of them work really well together. I mean, Daphne's fantastic; she's she's brilliant, um, and that character, as you say, again had an arc um, and finished in a really strong place. And although, yes, the trio separated at the end of the episode, you can easily see how a new series would have picked the, the, you know, the, the, the three of them back up together again. And no. Yeah, I can, I, you know, in my head now, I was thinking when you were saying that, <laughs> big finish, that'll be back, they're back and it's about time as, <laughs> as, as, the, as their tagline. And then you get like double vinyl releases, limited edition vinyls, because they'd sell out. They would absolutely yeah. sell out. And, you know, if they did take the I mean, big finish have done it with re- redoing the arc in space and redoing Genesis of the Daleks. So mm-hmm. if they took the the outline stories with the quest to find the Doctor's father Ulysses, it can take place in its own thank, uh, copyright Lawrence Miles bottle universe on its own. Um, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It won't mess with the continuity now because it's not. It's 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 yeah. a part. Of, but yeah, you know, you've got you the whole unbound uh, sea of series and stuff. You, yeah, you can you can do it. Um, uh, or you you could make it part of the main continuity, but whatever. But yeah, yeah. I, I still hold out. But I do have to give give a disclaimer, uh, as as you chaps will know. Um, I've got a small project on with EG right now, so. Uh, but I promise I'm not just blowing smoke up his ass. Um, yeah, you know, all, all this is quite is quite genuine. But that's another thing in itself. Another reason I want EG and Daphne to have another bash at this is because they are they they do give so much back to this fandom considering you know they, they were in the one uh the one movie and they've done a couple of big finishes as different characters um but they are so generous with their time and so um happy to engage with the fandom i think they deserve you know, not just that their characters deserve their one i think those two deserve an extra bash so um fingers crossed it happens and yeah my word if you could get the four of them paul mcgann eric roberts uh daphne yiji they will be it would be worth waiting for. Well, gents, do you know what? I'm not going to wrap this one up. I'm going to let our third bow tie wrap it up. Our new third bow tie. Is that new or nude? Uh, <laughs> both, actually. <laughs> that's, that, that's, what, that's why we can't. That's why we can't go visual on this. Here <laughs> so... you mate. Well, it's it's a mixed bag of opinions, um, but we can all agree. Yes, there might be some deficiencies in the story itself, but um, the, the characters it, it gave us and the things that it led to uh, and the acting in it and the production values of it and the direction uh, were, were and are and remain fantastic. I think, um, yeah, I would have loved that at the time. Certainly, I would have loved that to be a series. Um, okay, Ed's earlier point. Maybe if it had been a series, we wouldn't have RTD. Now we wouldn't have had New Who and Moffat and Chibnall and um, and and, and um, Shooty and, and everything else. Um, but alternatively, if it had never happened in '96, maybe there would have been no interest in, in reviving it at that point. Maybe the movie was the was the bridge. It was the building block in between. Okay, there's still an appetite for it in the UK. The audience was huge in America, not so much. Um, but yeah, there was. Um, it just reminded people that it was there uh, and it was worth going back to and worth investing in. And um, I think without it, we wouldn't be sat here discussing Doctor Who today, I think. So, yeah, while it can generate some criticism, I think we can all agree it had a very, it has a very important place um, in uh, in the Who-niverse. And um, we, should, we should all be grateful for it, including Ed. <laughs> I could not put that better myself. That's why you're all third bow tie. So on that bombshell, I've been Ashley. Ed, you've been Ed. Well, I, I'm assuming so. Yes. And James has been James. I certainly have. Bye for now, guys. <laughs>